what a good day this is. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I am Sarah Lynn Keller. I'm the Director of Spiritual Vitality and Congregational Care here at First Congregational Church of Natick. We are an open and affirming church of the United Church of Christ. I greet you in the name of our brother Jesus and pray that by our worship, you may know the companion God who meets us in all the days of our lives, in all of the moments of our lives, in our times of change and transition, times of loss and blessing. I extend a particular welcome to those of you who are joining us today by our live stream or recorded worship. And though we may worship in separate places, we know that we are all one in the body of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are warmly welcomed today by this congregation. I have a few announcements today. Um, you may have noticed many people with colorful shirts on today. The West Virginia work campers are here today to reflect on our journey to Cabell County, West Virginia, back in June, and to share some of our stories with you. So we'll be taking on the lay leader roles today in today's worship, and then pass along some of the wonderful stories from our time there. Um, we will have a time of candle lighting shortly, and just following these announcements. And so if you're at home and would like to gather a candle and what you need to join us in that part of the worship, we invite you to do that now. There will be a time of prayer later on after our reflection time, and so if you have some prayer requests or celebrations that you would like to share with us this morning, you can do that by emailing prayers at firstchurchnatic.org. And we will get those and include them in the prayer later on. We have our prayer ground. There are a few people here. Ned, and it looks like maybe Paige. I can't tell with a nice short haircut. Yes, it is Paige. Um, so if you want to join them, if, if we go on too long and you need some distraction, you are all welcome to go and draw a picture or whatever. Um, and is someone here? Amy, you're here to do a construction update? Good morning. Um, I'd like to just give, it's actually appropriate on this West Virginia Work Camp Day to give a construction update on the FCC Natick construction project. And if you hear a little bang, bang, banging, that's because yes, in fact, they're working upstairs today as well, just to add to the ambiance. Um, you'll also notice that there are some, there's some caution tape and signage around the kitchen. So we're asking that folks do not open the door as much as you wanna peek in. We do have uh, some epoxy floor, which is now in its final cure, um, and there's gonna be equipment moving in tomorrow, but we just wanna leave it sort of untouched today. So thank you for that. Um, just to give you an update on the kitchen, so the cabinets are installed, the base cabinets. Um, and of course, the base part of the flooring is installed. There'll be some finished work to go on to that. Um, the large equipment, stove and such, arrives tomorrow, which is very exciting for us. Uh, we have a power shutdown which is coming for the electrical gear installation. That's happening the, probably September 14th, but between the 14th and the 21st is the, is the timing. We have the new air conditioning units up here, you can see. They're not functioning yet, as you can feel. However, we're hoping that those get going in the next week or two. And then um, we have, we're in the middle of finalizing our final, like, small equipment procurement, so that's what's going on in the kitchen. In the sanctuary, um, the dais floor is finished, the stairs going up to the platform, um, and they're just doing now the underlayment, which is going on, and then this week the finished flooring, the cork material is going in, and um, I just want to let you know that there is a slight delay on the lighting at the moment that is related to the controls and we're still waiting for confirmation on the final fixture, the main pendant. However, um, it may be a delay for the sanctuary and it may push out into early November. So just keep that in mind that we may be going up there with a wonderful Thanksgiving moment, um, a time to be <laughs> very thankful. So um, I have photos on my phone. If anyone wants to see afterwards, I'm happy to show you some of the status. Thank you. And those are photos. 
photos that were taken this weekend, so yesterday, the kitchen and the sanctuary. So that's where we're at on those. So for any of you who might be around and available this afternoon at 4.30, Soren Natick will be coming to take out the purple flags off of our lawn to prepare them to go to the Newton Wellesley Hospital. They'll be installed there tomorrow. So if you're available at 4.30 and want to come help with that job of taking down the purple flags, join me and Soren Natick with that project. Um, and everyone should have received a letter in the mail asking for an update to your contact information and also just giving us some a little bit of information about how you see yourself connected to our church at this time. There's a spot on there for you to write comments. We would love to hear from everyone. Even if your information is correct and you're super involved and you think, oh, they don't need to hear from me, we would love to hear from all of you. So, and if you did not get a card, call the office and Randall can send one out to you so that we can get that information or you can just email, email us as well. But please take time to do that. We ask that they be returned to us by tomorrow. Um, we can extend that a few days, but we would love to see it. Karen. Randall will have some at the back table by the end of the service. No, no worries, no worries at all. And then we just wanted to update you on what's coming in the next few weeks. We're still in that transition time. Andy Burr has left us, but we have a bridge time. And so next Sunday is our rally day. And we hope that you will all return for rally day. This is our big day when we welcome everyone back. Um, the following, and, and Elaine Gaitani will be our bridge minister for that Sunday and the three following Sundays. And then the Reverend Dr. John Wegraff, who we all know so well, will be here on October 15th. And then, finally, finally, we will welcome the Reverend Cindy Worthington Berry on October 22nd, which is also our ONA Sunday, and we have a guest speaker for that Sunday as well, the Reverend James Ross. So we are going to just have a fabulous fall. And then a little bit more information about Rally Day. If you go to the next slide, Gail. Um, we have our church school registration, celebration of our faith formation ministry, blessing of the backpacks, third grade Bible presentation. There will be a special program for our children that morning. And then an all church barbecue after worship put on by our outreach team. So, woo! It's an exciting time here at FCC Natick. All right, well, we thought that because we, this was kind of an informal worship service today, we would continue doing our hymn sing for another Sunday. This will probably be the last Sunday we do the hymn sing, but I hope that you have some ideas for what hymns you would like to do. So we'll take probably three. Does anyone have a favorite that you'd like to shout out? 442. And that is, what a friend we have in Jesus. Let's just do the first verse, Tom.
42, and that is, let's see, God of Life. Is that the right one? Okay. God of Life. Let's just do the first verse. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We light the Christ candle as a reminder that Christ is here with us in worship this morning. join me in the responsive call to celebration. O oh Lord, my God, you are clothed with honor and majesty. You are wrapped in light and with the garment. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. And the sun knows its time for setting. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. We will sing to the Lord as long as we live. Please rise and body your spirit for hymn number 618, I See the Morning. Thank you.
Please join me in the opening prayer as we say together. Gracious and generous God, you are always fluttering around our lives, tending to what is wearing out, mending what has broken, enlarging what no longer meets our needs. You expand the space between yes and no to make room for me. You make openings for forgiveness and beginning again. Life is not a puzzle to be put together where pieces go missing and the design eludes us. Life is an experiment where we learn by improvising on what we have instead of regretting what we don't. Things do not have to stay the same. We are free to choose what matters to us. We choose you. We choose to follow the one who walked more honestly into life than any other. We choose you because to serve you is perfect freedom. Amen. For those of you that are new, uh, this is the time in our worship at, at First Congregational Church where we actually get up and informally greet each other. Say hi, fist pump, hug, how are you doing? But not too long because you want to hear us do a little singing and a little bit share, sharing the story. So, uh, and I read my script. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also be with you. So we're going to sing a couple of songs. We would love to have you join in if you want to. Um, we're going to do Almost Heaven, which you all know from West Virginia, and If I Had a Hammer, and then Sanctuary. So if you know the words, join in. Thank you. 
exciting. Not only we're having yet again another West Virginia Sunday, it's not the weekend that typically the group ball comes back, but just the fact that there was a group that actually was able to go down again for the first time is tremendous because we've done some fundraising, but certainly nowhere near the breadth of the fundraising we would typically do. So this is our chance to offer of ourselves and of our, our spirits. So the morning offering will now be received. substance into works of creative compassion for each other, for our wider community, and for the world beyond. Through this church, so may it be. Amen. And we were, we were working on all four houses. 
And so multiple times, all of the crews got together and, and had lunch together and reflected on, on you know, doing our morning devotions together. And it was really, really special, something that had never happened for me before, where it wasn't just your little group, but you gathered together as a larger group. Um, it showed me, really, truly, how close the people are there, that the families who live near each other and support one another and help one another through difficult times and celebrate when there's good things to happen. Um, the family that, that I was working with, Sarah, as she was on my crew, um, the, the gentleman, the father of the family was a vet and um, he really wanted to help us. And so he was out there helping us almost every day. He had teenage boys, they were out there helping us. They learned to use tools, it was great. Um, it was probably, I mean, we say this every year, right? It was one of the best years ever. Um, and we, it truly was, because when I went, when we left, we knew it was going to be a small group. We knew that it was only going to be about 40 campers instead of 120 campers. Really different than in the past. And there was a little part of me that was disappointed about that. And then the week happened. And it was phenomenal because we really connected with one another in a new way that was fabulous. And part of it was because, as I mentioned, there were four crews who were working in the same collar and we saw each other for more than just dinner at night. So anyway, I hope that our stories will inspire some of you to, to try it, to, to go. I know many of you have been to West Virginia. Lane's got, Lane and Kirsten have their shirts on, Lorraine's been. So anyway, um, who's next? Come on up. Yeah, Jake, come share. As Sarah Lynn said, um, those of you who have been down before will know how significant it is that we had 40 people versus however many before. We, there were eight work crews. If you do the math, it's about five people per crew. I was on work crew 24 at one point. So you can just think about how much bigger that was. So, um, but also touching off what Sarah Lynn said, we, we all sort of tapped into a, an energy at work camp with so few of us um, where we all really got to know each other really well and it was a really special trip. And we're so eager to, to share that energy that we all tapped into with the rest of the world. Um, but also, the folks in West Virginia were given a third of the help that they're typically given um, on an annual basis. So we would love to have more people come with us, but more importantly, the folks down there really need the help too. So thank you. Hi, um, I'm Kayla. Um, I've been hearing about this trip since my whole life. So I like pretty much knew a lot about it. I was, I've been excited for it. Then COVID happened, so I couldn't do it for like three years. So this is my first year. Um, and I kind of sent my, send my friend um, this year, like, I'm going to West Virginia. Like, want to come? And she was like, like, what? And I was like, you're coming with me. Come on. So then we went to West Virginia. She had no idea what was happening. Um, but, and I didn't really tell her anything. I wasn't very helpful, but we got down there and I like, it was a 12 hour drive. So I'm like, we're in the back of the van in our little bed for 12 hours and we get there and I see all the rolling, like the mountains that this song talks about. And I'm just like in awe. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was, and that was only the beginning. And then the week started and we met people from three different states and since it was such a small group, we really got to know them and made some amazing friends who are in Ohio and North Carolina. And we still talked to them. It was so amazing just seeing people from all over the country coming, all coming together, and you all have just one goal is to help other people who really need it. And the, with the work we do, we were building decks. We built like four, I don't even, a lot of decks. And with not that many people. 
and I didn't even know I could build a deck, but I could go home and build a deck right now. My mom actually wants me to, <laughs> but so <laughs> it was just, it was so amazing. And we would all get together and sing and like worship. And the first day I'm like, oh, we're going to Bible study. Like, here we go. But then the third day I was like, let's go to Bible study. I was excited. It was actually fun. Like it was actually, it was so much love all around you is just all, all I could feel was love. And like, you could really feel God's presence there. It was, it was just so amazing. So I really recommend going on, the, no matter how old you are. Really, I had a lady on my crew, Mary, she was like 85, but she, she led us. She knew what was going on. She was the only one who knew how to do the deck. So, yeah, thank you. So this year was me and Sarah's first time going to West Virginia as well. And one of the things that made it super special for us was not um, just at the work sites, but also what we did at camp afterwards. Like we would all hang out, we would play volleyball, like all the kids together. We would play cards at night. We did a giant slip and slide. So like the, those, some of those things were some of the things that made it super special for us. And when we did those things, we really connected to all the people at camp. And since it, was, since it was such a small group, we really got to build connections with every single person there. And that's something that made camp really special. Hi, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm the friend that Kayla dragged along. Uh, I had no expectation going into it, but as cliche as it sounds, it was really life-changing. And I learned a lot from the camp. And like you had to like, you have to get pushed out of your comfort zone a lot there. And it's like, at first it's really uncomfortable, but Seeing the faces of like just everyone around you, seeing everyone smiling and everyone pushing you to keep going was really life changing. And I appreciate everyone that was there and yeah. Steve, for those of you who don't know, also down in West Virginia, they refer to me as Moose. Use the mic for oh, for the people at home. Sorry, people at home, if you're watching. Um, it's interesting for me to see from an outside perspective. Um, since the last time I went, God has blessed me with a son, which is both great and just exhausting at the same time, which doesn't allow you to do as many different things. So I never was able to go to any of the meetings. I obviously didn't make this trip, uh, which is just completely just weird for me to think because of how many times I was able to go on the trip. So it's to see from afar that this still happened was fantastic. To see the picture and there's six people on this picture that had never attended the trip before is absolutely amazing. Sometimes we would get maybe one or two people in the 2015s to 2020s and we kind of would almost have to like beg people like this is amazing. Can you please just go? To see six new people go after a three-year hiatus is absolutely phenomenal, and it's exciting to think of the, hopefully the momentum that this can have to put forward. Uh, I think the last thing that I'll just say is that as I stepped back, Bob stepped in and did an absolutely phenomenal job and spearheaded and led pretty much this whole trip. So it literally would not have been done without Bob. So thanks, Bob. All right, I'll, I'll piggyback off of Steve's thing. Um, I don't know how the heck you do it every year. Uh, it, it is a colossal amount of work to make this trip happen. Uh, sometimes it's like herding cats, uh, trying to get everybody to move in the right direction, at least pack yourself into a van. You wouldn't think that would be 
the hardest thing of the trip, but you know, I, I was kind of a little scatterbrained on uh, Pat Cup Saturday, and I come back and my kid is the only one who hasn't found a seat to go down to West Virginia. So <laughs> eventually we got him squeezed in a van someplace uh, and made it happen. But Steve, uh, kudos to you for carrying it on uh, for many years. Uh, we would love to have more people involved. The, the more people we have, yes, the gymnastics of trying to get people in the vans and down to West Virginia and house gets exponentially harder, but it gets, it, it makes it so much more impactful when we get down there. So there's been a lot of talk about camp was small and, and there were good things and there were bad things with camp. You know, Jake said we had a third as many people to do jobs as we had in the past. Um, it did give you the opportunity to connect to people more closely. So my job this year uh, was actually working for a homeowner that I'd worked for with Stacy six, seven years ago, well, probably longer than that, because Maverick is six now, <laughs> seven or eight years ago. Um, ironically, we did a kitchen for them the last project. Unfortunately, it was a house that they were renting. And after we improved the house, the landowner sold the house out from under them. So they kind of got this huge setback from having really no kitchen to having a nice kitchen to being not quite homeless, but essentially homeless, couch surfing for a while. And it took them a long time to build up their cash reserves such that they could buy their own little piece of property and then get a trailer and get the trailer hauled to the site. And, and I don't know how, I mean, I, I had a hard time driving a minivan into some of these roads. I don't know how the heck they get trailers into these places, but they do it. So, so the house that they, the trailer that they bought had a kitchen. Um, to say it was non-functional is to give it a lot of credit. <laughs> uh, and she was making it work, right? As bad as it was, she was making it work with buckets under it to catch the drips and the leaks and, and whatnot. So prior to camp, um, we were embarking upon the renovation of the kitchen. So I was devastated to hear that the cabinets were going to get crushed. So I reached out to Steve Perry down in West Virginia, said, hey, Steve, here's some pictures of cabinets um, that were taking out of the church. Can you use any of this on a project? And he immediately calls me up, hey, yes. Guess what? Amanda needs a kitchen again. <laughs> and so we took the island, the island kitchen sink, uh, down to West Virginia and put it into Amanda's trailer. So, so the sink lives on. Right? Um, a, li a little part of FCC now lives in West Virginia, right? And um, it, it is amazing what small things have, can have such a big impact on a family, right? So a lot of stuff that we take for granted for up here, running water that has a place to drain to that's not the floor, is a huge thing down there, right? So our trips go a small step towards improving people's lives down there, and we'd love to have more people join us so that we can be more impactful in the future. Thank you. Trish, Kaylee, any, no, no? Okay, Stacy. Stacy's gonna wrap it up. Jake said the reason I'm last is so that I can be played off. <laughs> um, I'm Stacy Dowling, I know many of you here, um, but if you don't know me, uh, I, I, I am still a member of this church, joined the church in 1990. Um, 2010 was my first year going to West Virginia, and it was after two of my kids had already gone, uh, who insisted that I stop telling them to do, to, to go on this trip because it was so valuable, and then not go. Like, yeah, mom, put your money where your mouth is, get, get, get on the stick. And, you know, I had thought about it for many years, but it was way out of my comfort zone to sleep in a place that I hadn't seen with people that I didn't know. And I know that there are people who are sitting here in these chairs right now who've had those same thoughts. You know, in the opening prayer this morning, 
God, you expand the space between yes and no and make room for maybe. Come on. I, you won't regret it. You just won't regret it. I promise you. Now, there were uh, just a few highlights that I wanted to add um, that made this year particularly fantastic in comparison to other years is that since it was a small group and everybody got to know each other so well, all of the youth put tables together in the dining hall so that they could sit around it and eat together every night, every one of them. The talent show that we routinely have on Wednesday evenings, I think had like 98% participation from every camper. It was really amazing. And every year is really amazing for its unique set of circumstances. Another highlight that I don't know if you know, sometimes people bring animals back from West Virginia. It's not recommended, but my first year I did. And I have a little doggy named Marshall after Marshall University, and he's 13 and a half and living the heck of a good life. Um, also this year, uh, a, a Pembroke family um, who came with us because their church no longer sponsors the trip, they brought a dog. And um, our friend, Bob's friend, who, who was introduced, uh, Jeff Crosby, to West Virginia through Bob, brought home a cat who he is totally in love with. And if you see the group picture going back, there's a person standing there with this cage, and he's got his little kitty in the back of that. Oh, and there's, and there's the dog, who recently was only recently named. What was his name now? Cooper. Cooper, yeah. Hooper, sorry, Hooper. Anyway, I'm giving you details that may not mean anything to you, but I just want to tell you just how fun it is. I, you know, I, I've spent one week with these people in West Virginia, and they have become the most dear, wonderful, important people in my lives. A self-selected group that comes together who wants to do good in the world. You know, if you feel like the, the world is wearing you down, and watching the news is so depressing. I mean, my gosh, get yourself in a van and go to West Virginia and see all the good that's going on and all the love that's being shared. It's, it is a tonic for your soul, I promise you. You will not have a regret. Think about it. Think about it seriously. Commit to it right now so that we can come after you. <laughs> thanks very much, everybody, and thanks for all your support. going to check real quickly if we have any prayer requests. I don't see any. Okay. Well, this, as we gather for our time of prayer, I just want to ask if there's anyone here who has something sitting on their heart, either a prayer request or a celebration you want to share with the community. Um, Dee Dee. I'll, I'll repeat it, or you can come here. So this was posted on our Facebook page by a community member. A big thank you to the United Congregational Church of Natick, um, for the <laughs> First Congregational Church of Natick, for providing a space for flags, for people to put the names of their lost loved ones who were victims of the opioid crisis. I miss my goddaughter, Maddie, and today was an emotional day for me. My heart goes out to the thousands of people who have lost and continue to lose loved ones due to this opioid crisis. And she's one of the people who used the red flag to write her goddaughter's name. So I just wanted to share that with the church, that the space we're providing is really meaningful to people. And I wanted to add her prayer to our prayers today. Thank you. That name was Maddie? The, the yeah, so Maddie and her family. Stacy.
So prayer is a celebration for Stephen and Sibley. Sibley for their wedding in Colorado that the Milton Dowling family attended and celebrated. And then also prayers for the family of Gar the Gary family, Tim Gary, who died by suicide recently. Lane. The people of Morocco, right, there were so many lost to that earthquake. And to the folks who are doing the search and rescue, th that is a hard, hard job. Amy. For the Legu family, um, I haven't heard recently, Bob is in hospice, I haven't heard, I think he is still, still hanging in there. So for prayers for Nancy and their, and their two daughters. All right. Well, with those concerns and the, the names listed on our prayer list, and adding to that those people who are living with cancer and those living with mental health challenges, let us pray. Holy One, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts, filled with thankfulness for all the ways that you provide for us. We thank you for the opportunities that we have to be a community of faith, serving the world as you would have us do. Thank you for the energy of our young people who gave of their time and spirit to make homes accessible in Cabell and Lincoln Counties, West Virginia this summer. And thank you for inspiring the adults who accompanied them. We ask that you are gracious upon our minds, bodies, and spirits when we are weary and exhausted. Renew us and refresh our spirits. Remind us that you are ever present with us. We are never alone. Give us the courage to face the challenges of our days and the fears of our nights and to represent you with humility in the world. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our divine parent, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom be come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us. Please rise in body or spirit for hymn number 467, I'm going to live so God can use me.
out to be Christ and to see Christ in this world. Rejoice in the love of God.